Artsakh has been uh, a part of Armenia for thousands of years, and I'm not even exaggerating because we're one of the oldest <laughs> countries that uh, have lived on throughout history. We were the first to accept Christianity uh, seven, 1700 years ago, and Artsakh is a place that has literally has monasteries and churches from the 5th century, 7th century, 13th century, so there only an idiot would dispute that this land has always been populated by Armenians. At one point in the uh, 1920s, uh, when the Soviet Union was being organized, uh, it was also supposed to be, uh, to be uh, added to Armenia. And one day before this decision was to be signed, Joseph Stalin changes his mind. He mm -hmm. says, no, I'm not going to give it to Armenians. Let's put it into Azerbaijan, but make it an autonomous republic. So it's not fully Azerbaijan. It's kind of, uh, it has all self-regulation and stuff, but technically it is. And it stays there for 70 years when Soviet Union, to, to the point where Soviet Union collapses. So when it collapses, what happened is there are 15 states. And each of them gets to vote whether they want to go out and become independent. And every state votes. Armenia votes, Kazakhstan votes, Azerbaijan votes. And just like that, Artsakh also votes because they don't want to be a part of Azerbaijan. See, when they joined, uh, there was a population of 80 something percent Armenian, 89, I think, percent Armenians. The lowest the population of Armenia has been with uh, when they were uh, autonomous in Azerbaijan was 80, uh, 79 percent, 79 or something. So still, like, it's not even the majority. It's absolutely everyone that are Armenian there. Of course, they vote to get out. And that's what happened. And uh, Azerbaijan disputes that. And uh, they disagree with that. And they are using forces. Uh, the sad thing about uh, this war, this current war, is they're not just using their forces. Uh, they brought in terrorists from Syria and from Libya. They're fighting on their side. It's a fact that has been uh, voiced by French President Macron, by Russians. We have intercepted a number of uh, conversations of terrorists discussing the situation, and they are uh, brought to uh, Azerbaijan from Turkey. And Turkey is a big part of uh, this whole uh, new war because Turkey wants to dominate South Caucasus. Turkey wants to be the new big shot in the region. It's challenging Russia. It's challenging others. And the international community seems to be too silent about this because, um, well, this is actually uh, uh, now a terrorist threat. And when you have terrorists and when you have so many countries committed to fighting terrorism like United States, uh, it's uh, unclear to me why they are so silent and why they are so sort of cautious in their remark, like saying that fighting erupted, not saying the word who started it. It's obvious who started it because you have a independent state that's right there and another state that wants to get it. So who attacks who? It, this is very simple logic, right? They, they have everything they want. Why would they attack? Azerbaijan or somebody else, a state that's like 100 times more bigger than theirs. They never would. But international community has been very uh, quiet about this. Russia is taking some steps for the ceasefire. And even now, like we have this, this ceasefire didn't even last for five minutes because mm, what they thought is their president says they, before the ceasefire, the president announced that they have taken a region in Hadrut. And it, he tweeted about this, but they haven't. So the ceasefire was supposed to start at uh, midday, at 12 o'clock. And they thought that let's do like one last try to get this land so the president doesn't look stupid. <laughs> and they sent 200 uh, terrorists, uh, but their attack was uh, uh, our guys fought off and they couldn't take it. So they went uh, beyond this uh, mid midday point and once again, prove themselves uh, to even be sort of uh, not keeping up to their promise to keep the ceasefire. The only reason the ceasefire was so that both sides can exchange corpses. And, uh, and so that's the issue. So then um, the war in the early 90s. So what happened from 
the time this, well, I guess that's what the Soviet Union collapsed in 89, 90. And is that what triggered? Well, now that that country does that, that territory that doesn't exist anymore, that power, then uh everybody wants that, that part of land. Is that why that happened in the early nineties? Well, not everyone, just uh, well, everybody wants that part of the land. And then, uh, well, that was like part of the whole deal. Soviet Union would have such little mines, you know, installed in every republic that was part of it so that there would be then disputes. And there were like a lot of nations that were, you know, transported from one place to the other. So now we're sort of trying to deal with that. And it's not the hardest thing to deal with that if our neighbor so-called neighbor Azerbaijan would, you know, just adhere to international law and uh, uh, just uh, fulfill uh, the requirements that they signed upon, the UN resolutions that they signed upon, that they cite so often against us. But they were the ones like in 93, they signed these resolutions and uh, there were these UN resolutions. They were supposed to, to um, first of all, establish a ceasefire and they kept sh uh, violating so what so they, they had a ceasefire and they kept violating it is yeah after... and it's happening today they even today they're shelling uh stepanakir the capital of nagorna uh, of artsakh and uh, like it is ceasefire now supposedly we are in ceasefire but they keep shelling it they're using cluster bombs and cluster bombs uh it's like a rocket and inside of it it has even more like tiny bombs so when it explodes, it then further explodes to cause even more sadistic kind of damage. These kind of things are banned uh, by every organization that is dealing with warfare. And it's, it's basically a war crime to use that. But they have been using it for weeks now. So why, what happened between, it seems like this is something that hasn't been fixed ever, really. It hasn't been solved, hasn't. No one's yeah. came to an agreement at any point. What happened from 1994 when the fighting ended until three weeks ago or whenever the fighting started again? So uh, after 1994, there was the status quo when negotiations went on, but didn't really. Uh, and uh, in the beginning, you said well, what America has to do with it. See, United States, France and Russia are part of the means group, uh, means group that is supposed to... Um, settle this issue and um, the negotiations went on but they didn't come to any like realistic conclusion in 2010 in 2013 we thought we we're really close but it did not happen due to uh, Azerbaijan not really willing uh, they kept wanting more than was initially proposed to them and that is why it never happened okay and you mentioned these, uh, the terrorists that are coming in from Syria, right? And from what I can tell, what it seems like, there's a lot of different reports on that. Some say it's, it's happening. Some, you know, obviously in Azerbaijan, they just deny that those terrorists even exist. But also it seems like they're coming from, they're being paid by Turkey. Yeah, they're, they're handsomely paid. Uh, they're paid uh, $1,000 a month, <laughs> you know, yeah, uh, to come and die, I guess, which is, uh, but you imagine from they're coming from a poor country, which uh, maybe there it's a, a lot of money. And um, I mean, it's not even essentially debated anymore because there's so much evidence to it. There are videos of them now. There is intercepted conversation and there are, you know, presidents uh, like of France saying this. Uh, the Russian intelligence is saying this. So these aren't uh, okay. like... Entities but, that would speak based on some suggestions or maybe. So but why is, but why is uh, so Turkey? Why is Turkey involved? Turkey wants to dominate South Caucasus. Turkey wants, you know, they have this big dream of reinstating the uh, Ottoman Empire, much like Hitler wanted to reinstate the Reich. Now they want this neo Ottoman Empire. They want to sort of go on, join Azerbaijan and then Kazakhstan and and uh, neighboring countries so they have these really really big plans they want to challenge russia uh, to dominate the region that's why um this is one of the locations they are sort of provoking everyone with and also i guess in part they're also uh testing this uh, flying drones which this basically is the first war to be really uh fought using so much drones 
And like, if you look at some of the footage, it's basically something from Star Wars. Like you, you watch this and you don't even believe that this is happening right now because it looks so much like Star Wars. And they, Azerbaijan has bought a lot of those from Israel. Israel is uh, providing them these drones. Also Turkey builds them. They have a, like a common plant in uh, Turkey that Azerbaijan and Turkey are producing these drones. So our guys are really fighting like the new age war, which has like nothing to do with the wars you've seen before, uh, like in Iraq or World War II, it looks basically nothing like that.